Hello and welcome to Super Agents Live. As always, I really appreciate you coming on and spending part of your day with me. Now, if you've been listening to this week, all the episodes this week, you know that we've been kind of doing a Tom Ferry theme. Uh, we had one of Tom's students, Gary Gold, on on Monday. Uh, he's killing it. On Wednesday, we had Todd Miller, who uh, Todd has known Tom for a long time. He's been a coach and a student and a friend. Today is the finale of that theme, and we have the man himself. You know, my company today will do about a thousand events. Mr. Tom Ferry. We talk about a ton of stuff. We, we go over mindset. We talk about why winners are more disciplined in their businesses and life. During this episode, and you're going to want to hear this. Tom gets down to the ground level. He calls out some people in real estate. I was... <laughs> I was I was shocked that he did that, but he did. I mean, and we talk about his authenticity. I love it. Real quick, somewhere around 20 minutes, uh, both Tom and I, we drop an S-bomb. Now, that's S as in scared. And uh, I just want to let you know, just in case you, you know, you're know you driving your kids to school and you're listening on the radio, um, I don't want anybody to be shocked. Other than that, it's a very G-rated uh, thing. And look, I don't even know if the S word puts us into PG level. It probably doesn't, but uh, I just want to let you know. Other than that, this episode is jam-packed with awesome actionable advice. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Here's the show. <laughs> Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Hey, Tom, thanks for taking the time out today. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Toby. It's a pleasure to be here. So, so Tom, I've given a, a brief overview of your background, but maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what you have going on right now. So, you know, it's a big question. I'm celebrating my 25th year in the industry. So, you know, my company today will do about a thousand events um, where whether we're in somebody's office or we're at a hotel or we're doing a major conference. So we're really committed this year to impact as many real estate professionals as we can. You know, we've, we've discovered that there are, there's no wrong way to generate clients in real estate. And the struggle that we see on the streets is too many agents have been trained to, to be rather myopic in their approach. So they get very isolated, very focused on one thing, and they do that one thing over and over again. And that's, that's great. I mean, it makes for a fantastic book, and it's a great conversation. But it's not really good for business. If you really want to grow and expand your business, you've got to diversify just like you wouldn't put all your financial eggs in one basket. We believe and we've experienced that agents that diversify their marketing and their lead generation simply outperform and outsell everybody else. So we're on a mission this year to talk to about 50,000 agents face-to-face and help them expand their marketing, expand their lead generation, doing more of what they know that works um, and just doing it better. So that's really what we're up to. I mean, it's coaching, it's training, it's events, it's videos, it's the, it's the whole enchilada with a very simple focus, help people sell more. Look, I love that. I, I, and, I, and I love that idea and I love what you're going after. But listen, you, so you said, Tom, you said um, most, most agents have a myopic view and, and you are, are saying, uh, saying go and diversify. So one thing I hear on the show, Tom, is that you know, everybody should have this niche uh, they should have a specialization and go after it. And if you have a niche, right, you niche, niche, niche down. Uh, if you have a niche and you know your audience, you know, th- you need to market to that small niche. So are you saying uh, go broad or, or go deep? I'm saying to you, do both. You're going to have your niche, right? Let's, so you can look at some of the traditional niches. It could be, you know, I work my golf course community, right? Today we would call that a geographic farm as an example. Or it could be high-end listings, uh, expired listings in a specific marketplace. Or it could be I work attorneys. Whatever your, whatever your uh, focus is, is your focus. That's your niche. Here's what we know works. The agents that are dominating today follow a rule called two-third, one-third. We do two-thirds of our business tried and true. 
And I know, listen, I'm 43. There, there'll be people listening to this that are in their 30s like, oh, my God, old school, you know, that, you know, I, I'm over that. I want everything to be mobile, and I want it to all be, you know, in the Internet and in the clouds. And my response is, awesome, that's great. You're missing a truckload of money with geographic farming, with working your past clients and sphere in your database. You're missing a ton of money with open houses, especially open houses as listing attraction portals today. And then we do the super crazy technology stuff. Does that make sense? Yeah, it completely makes sense. And, I, and, I, and you know, what I see is people, people look, real estate is, is a world of no's, right? Is, is, a, is a game of rejection. And, and look, nobody likes to be rejected. Nobody wants to hear no. So, you know, it seems to me that a lot of people try and they go out and hide behind social media, right? They're on social media and, and they, they think that deals are going to come to them. But but in reality, if you want to succeed, you do what you did, right? You said a minute ago, you want to get face to face, belly to belly in front of 50,000 people. Absolutely. Listen, the, the number one realtor on the planet a few years ago is a longtime friend and a great client. You know, the, the whole lore magazine, you know, you, you know what I'm talking about, the top 250 teams, individuals, transactions, yep. volume, all that stuff. Yep. He, he took his business from about $79 million in sales to three years later, just shy of $400 million in sales. Unbelievable. And when, he, when, when we reflected back on the difference, and by the way, this is as the market was completely crumbling around him, here was the difference. Hey, at the end of the day, my job is to be in front of sellers who want to list houses. So I don't care how the lead showed up. I don't care where the appointment came from. My job is to find people that want to sell their house, get in front of them, and ultimately try and convert. That's the, that's the mission for everybody we talk to. You know, don't be myopic. You know, rejection is going to happen. If you want to talk about rejection? Toby, what's harder, being rejected by a friend who chooses another agent or a complete stranger you met at an open house who has another agent? Which, which rejection is more challenging? Your, your friend, of course. Absolutely. And what we know, look at just the NAR study that just came out from last December, um, was it 82 or 89%? I don't want to misquote it, but it was an enormous number. 82 to 89% of sellers said, we love our agent. Toby was the absolute best. And yet only 12% of them use that same agent again in their next transaction. That's yeah, that, rejection. Uh, yeah, that is. But why is that? I mean, is that, is, is that a problem? It, you know, it, that agent didn't do something right. They love their agent, but they wouldn't use them again, or they didn't use me again. That is a, that is a follow-up problem. What, what kind of a problem is that? I think it's one of two things. It's, it's actually something that we explore a lot, um, both with our agent advisory council, uh, as well as with our coaches, always in this conversation. You know, a couple things we know. Only a third of the agents in the industry have any sense of a database. Were you aware of that? No. Okay, Zillow did an extensive research piece on this. 30%, right? Call it 35, call it 31, who cares? It's a small percentage of agents on the planet actually have a database. Top producer, contactually, wise agent, you know, we, we know all the names. So you got obviously some range of 60% that don't have any systematic follow-up campaign for those people. We live in a day and age where you make 10 phone calls and you're lucky if one person answers. You know, 90% of people respond to a text message in under five minutes, but agents don't know what to say in the text, so they come across silly, campy, or desperate, right? So they don't know what to say. That's a challenge. So you know what they do? They go do an open house, or they look for the next, you know, social media or next bell and whistle to try and find an easy transaction. So we got that side. The flip side, though, and I think the reason why that number is so low is what they're sending, the marketing message that they're sending to their database doesn't resonate for today's consumer. You know, so we're, we're sending them the same old just listed or just sold because we want to drip on them, if you will. Right. Um, you know what we're seeing that's, that's really interesting right now? That? We're seeing more newsletters again. Hmm. And that sounds crazy in 2014, but in 2013, newsletters were hot. You know, letting people know what's really going on, not just the same old direct mail piece or the thing we can go to Zillow or Trulia and click on a button and, and read some stats, but to get the agent's opinion about the market. Got is it. it a good time to sell? Is it a bad time to sell? It, you know, should we be waiting for two years? You know, the opinion about the agent, just like you doing these interviews, people get to know you, they fall in love with you, they, you know, they dig your message. It's the same thing. So I think it's a combination of no follow-up because not everybody has a CRM that they're using or worse, 
the ones that are following up are, are just sending the same old sort of garbage message out and people aren't connecting. Unbelievable. Yeah. So 60% don't have a database. The 30% who do have a database, they, they're fundamentally not using it correctly. And look, you know what? The, the, the funny thing is I did, I did an email. I'm sorry. I did an, a, an episode that was called uh, Your Net Worth is Your Network, right? And the money is in the list. It's, it's amazing that people don't follow up with that. So one of the things on your – you have had – fabulous success with your clients. And I went to your website or I watched a video. And by the way, you, you, your videos are awesome. And if, if everybody in the audience, you're not, you. you haven't seen any Tom stuff, go out there because there's lots of good stuff out there. But so you say, and this is a quote right here. You say that your clients close 78% more deals. What are you doing? Well, I mean, what is the Tom Ferry strategy or secret that helps people achieve that much more success? So it's going to sound really, really simple. Like yourself, Toby, I've started multiple different companies. I've been an entrepreneur my entire life. And, and if you look at the fundamental reasons why businesses fail, number one is they don't attract enough customers. Number two, they don't get those customers to buy from them at any level of frequency, you know, past clients, referrals, et cetera. And number three is they don't manage their money and they don't manage their business. The, the client experience suffers. So any one of those three could be the reasons why. So what do we do as a firm? Number one is, okay, I'm, I'm, I might be dating myself here, but do you remember I Love Lucy? Sure. Remember I Love Lucy, yeah. the, you know, black and white television show, Lucille Ball, right? So do you remember I Love Lucy, Lucy and Ethel at the Chocolate Factory? Do you remember that episode? No, no, I don't. So I'd like you to imagine for all my for all the people that are listening, they, you know, anybody will remember this. Um, it's it's Lucy and Ethel working at the chocolate factory, and the chocolates come down the conveyor belt, and their job is to take the chocolate and strategically place it inside the box to be shipped off to you know some happy customer. Well, you know, they're getting a little coaching from their manager who says, you know, put the chocolates inside the box, and they start doing it. It's pretty easy. Then the machine gets sped up, and now there's more chocolates coming down than they seem to have time or hands for, right? That's my goal with my customers. I want them to have more chocolates than they have time. So the number one biggest problem agents have today, they say is organization, right? I'm totally unorganized. My database isn't done. My, you know, my mailers aren't being done on time. You know, I don't know which way I should go, right, left. So we've got an industry full of confusion. They say it's organization. I say write a one-year marketing plan. That's step number one. Write a one-year marketing plan. How many different ways are you going to touch your database first and foremost? And, and how do you have your database segmented? Past clients, past clients that have referred, past clients that haven't referred. You know, people in your sphere, people that in your sphere that have referred, have not referred, right? You start grouping them and then touching them strategically every single, you know, whether it's every other week or at the minimum once a month. That's first. Then you say, well, where else do I want my business to come from? Well, gosh, when you take your transactions, and I think every agent on the planet listening should do this, you take a list of your transactions and you upload all of your transactions into Google Maps or to Bing from Microsoft. And Toby, what you get is a visual representation of where all the concentration of your transactions are in your town. Well, that's how you then say, hmm, I've sold a lot of condos in that subdivision. Maybe I should farm that community because I've already got a track record there. So, so we say very scientifically, very strategically, let's analyze the best opportunities for growth, put it into a marketing plan, Excel, you know, Excel spreadsheet, easy. Is it going to be mail? Am I going to knock on a door? Am I going to make a phone call? Is it going to be an email? Is it going to be uh, you know, a Facebook post? Is it going to be a video? All the different touch points that we have, they're just vehicles to get the word out. And then for the year, how are we going to get it done? And then you get into the second part, which really is now the how do I get it done? Am I going to do it? One of the hottest trends amongst our clients right now, Toby, they're, they're hiring one day a week, three hours or a full day, a graphic design marketing person who comes in and spends the entire three hours or day just doing the marketing and lead generation for their agents. What do you think happens when an agent doesn't have to worry about the postcard? Is it going right. out? Did it get mailed? Did I get it at the right price? Am I overpaying for this? What's the best solution? How do I, how do I upload a video onto YouTube? How do I do a, a good Facebook boost from my fan page? All that stuff being handled by somebody else. When that happens, right, 
Now the agent is free to go do what they do best. Talk to customers. Yeah. I mean, play your strengths and outsource your weaknesses, you know, and stuff like that. You know, I, I'm glad. I mean, look, Tom, this is a fantastic interview so far. I mean, I love the database thing. I love uploading everything I have into Google Maps. And now you're talking about outsourcing. Lots of people, if they don't know how to do a Facebook ad, they don't know how to you know, you know, how to properly buy or design postcards, we'll spend half a day on Google trying to figure it out. What I mean, that's a waste of time. How many calls uh, could you do in that four hours? So, so yeah. Um, yeah. I love that you're talking about that. So um, again, you have this coaching method that works. Uh, and and lots of, uh, again, I, before the call we talked and, and I was saying, I think the 2014 is going to be the year of coaching. If I've never had a coach, Tom, talk to me about that. You know, let's, can we talk a little bit about your coaching method overall? I know we're getting into it right now, but talk about your sure. coaching method and uh, what I should look for. If, if I've never had a coach, what should I look for in a coach? You know, I think it all comes down to, so, so I've, Toby, I've had coaches all of my life, right? I've got a, a health and vitality coach. I've got a relationship coach and I've got a business coach. And, and I just discovered a long time ago that I'm, I'm just one of those people that I do better when I'm being supported, right? When I'm left to my own devices, I mean, you know, this morning at 545 when the alarm went off, I didn't want to go to the gym. You with me? Like, yeah. but I got Brad, I got Brad Davidson there. And if it's six o'clock and I'm not at the gym, he's texting me and calling me and saying, Hey, get your butt here. So what I know is when you measure performance, performance improves. Bottom line, every time when you measure performance, performance improves. And when you measure performance and it improves, and then you get feedback about your performance, right. all of IBM's great research there, the, the sort of master quoter of that statement, they said you get another bump of your production by another 25%. So, you know, if somebody has never been coached before, this is what I would say to them. Did you ever have a great teacher, a mentor, an uncle, a boss, a coworker, someone that took you under their wing and said, hey, look, you know, everybody's going left, but it's kind of painful when you go left. If you just go right, it's rocky for the first, like, you know, couple minutes on that walk, but then the journey becomes very extraordinary. Everybody's had someone like that. That's what a coach does. Now, in business, you know, we're not talking about losing weight and, you know, saving your life. And we're, we're talking about, hey, our job is to make you money, right? We say to our clients, we have to make you a 10 times ROI on your coaching investment, which puts a lot of pressure on us to get them out of their head, into action, doing the right things, and ultimately, not doing things they don't want to do, doing the things that are right for them, right for their market, and are strategic that work. So, you know, sometimes there's training and education involved. Sometimes there's interviewing other top agents and finding out that, wow, if those guys can do it or these women can do it, I can do it too. That's kind of the journey of coaching. Right. You know, um, I love that. And and going back to uh, the thing you said about measuring performance, you know, you said you, if you measure yes. performance, performance I improves and then get feedback on that. And uh, it, do you find that when people come to you, it's, it seems to me out there that the our audience, aspiring agents or aspiring, you know, the number one in their office, um, they're not measuring anything. They don't really know how many calls they did last week. They don't know the, what yeah. their conversion rates are. They don't know what marketing is working or not. And and conversely, or because of that, they don't know what their cost of sale is, right? Um, yeah. Yes. Wh why is a simple thing like tracking? I mean, that is a simple, basic thing um, in a business. I mean, why are people missing that? You know, I, I think it's probably multiple reasons. First, it's habit. So you either have the habit or you don't. And, and, you know, there's so many, I'm sure you're doing a lot of the same research I'm doing. There's so many lies about habits, you know, the old, oh, it takes 21 days to develop a habit. So, you know, a bunch of us get together and we say, okay, let's, let's not drink for the next 21 days. You know, on the 21st day, I still wanted a glass of wine, right? It, I wasn't over that, if you will. Right. The science of it actually says it takes 67 days if it's a remedial habit, and it could take as many as 100 days if that habit is a little more advanced, right? A little more challenging. So, so I think the big reason why is it's not habit. We actually created an app called Thriving Daily. And the purpose of that app was really for all of our coaching clients. And then we just made it available kind of on iTunes for the world is that you could from your phone, right? From your iPhone, from your iPad, with your thumb, you could set your goals, 
you know, business is just math. It's going to tell you exactly how many seller conversations and buyer conversations you need to have every day, how much lead follow-up you need to do, all, you know, all in like five clicks with your thumb. And then guess what happens? When they make a few phone calls, they click, click, click. It tallies it all up. The app tells you every day, are you ahead? Are you behind? Wow. So, so we said, you know, can we take this, this struggle for these wonderful entrepreneurial salespeople that are fantastic people people and aren't always the best at the analytics and the, the number crunching side of their business? Can we make it fun? Can we make it entertaining? You know, Toby, can they win, you know, imaginary badges you know, while they're making real money? Sure, right. So I, I would tell everybody, check that out. And then I would say to you, it takes time. It takes time to develop the habit. Give yourself the gift of two months. And then what happens is you begin to reflect back and look at those numbers and say, wow, every 29 conversations, I make a sale. You know, every 72 conversations, I have a closing. And the moment an agent gets that, a moment the agent says, hey, business is business. It's just math. People aren't numbers. I want to make that distinction. People are not numbers. We treat every prospect with the utmost of respect as if whatever we're going to say could show up tomorrow on the front cover of our local newspaper. Everybody gets the best of you. Right. And, and it's numbers. Right, we're tracking right now. We have clients that every 17 conversations, Toby, they make a sale. Our average is like 49.5. So we just say, hey, it's 50 conversations with a past client, a new customer, an open house, an internet lead, a text message, an email. It's 50 conversations to a sale. So how many sales do you want to make? You want to make 40? You got 2,000. 2,000 divided by 10 months because nobody actually works 12 divided by 20 days. Guess what? You got to do eight conversations a day. Get to it, partner. How hard is that? It's just it, it's just math, right? So so going back to and and what's the name of that app again? I think everybody should go get it. It's called Thriving Thriving Daily, or they can just go to iTunes and just type in Tom Ferry, and it would be the only one. So Got it. Thriving Daily, super easy. Um, they register, they get you know their immediately access to the back end of our website and some cool scripts and other you know marketing things and all that good stuff. But most importantly a place to track and measure and to remove the uncertainty of this crazy emotional business real estate. Right. All while you build your list. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I so, so going back to coaching. Well, just in, in right. fairness, yeah. we already have an enormous list. Oh, I know you do. So, yeah. I was just, I was just picking out the early database. Sure. Um, so, of course. When I'm interviewing a coach, what, what things should I ask? To figure out if there's if there's a good fit because a lot you know there's lots of information out on the internet right now uh you know of brian course. buffini or whatever but everything's behind a paywall they're like hey i will help you grow your business but pay me first and you know that's that, that takes a big leap of faith for somebody to break out their wallet and pay before they get any results so you know if i'm going to interview uh somebody um in a one of those organizations what sorts of things should i ask so, so first of all, I'll tell you the same thing I just told my son, who is an aspiring young tennis player. All right. I said, every great coach has stuff available on YouTube, whether it is their students or it is the coach themselves. You know, you, YouTube is everything you want to know, everything you want to learn, everything you want to do. And, and then from there, I would say, you're, you know, you're, you're going to interview first by watching what they have and ask yourself, does that resonate for me? You know, at the end of the day, coaching is a relationship. I mean, I have, you know, 40 plus coaches that, that are coaching for us. These are active agents. They're, you know, some of them are, are retired. They sold their businesses and now they, they coach because they want to contribute and give back. But you can go on my website. You can watch every one of the videos of all the coaches and go, I really like that one. You know, that gal's uh, no BS. That one's really good with internet marketing. Wow, that one's really strong at, you know, past client or database management or this one's really organized. So, so I think today in a world of, total transparency that the first thing is you go to that person's website and you watch the videos of their coaches because that's the product. That's who you're ultimately going to end up aligning yourself with and having that person support you. Then I would go to YouTube and I would watch every video you can of that, of that coach or of that trainer and, and just ask yourself, does it resonate? Do I feel that this person can help me do more, be more, achieve more, do it in less time, do it with less effort? And if the answer is yes, 
that's going to be the coach. Got it. So whether that's myself or, or Buffini or my dad or, you know, I mean, there's, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there. You know, I, I get a lot of emails from, from our, my audience and, and they, they always ask me about coaching. They, you know, they tell me their story, number one, then they're like, who should I, you know, should I get a coach? Number one. And they go, who should, who would you recommend? Right. So I get those calls. And it's one thing I find that's amazing is that when they're telling me their story, Tom, it's, it's, I, like, I see this, a big wall of ego, right? I can see it. I'm oh, like, yeah. you know what, man? I don't even know if I really want to talk to you, right? Because it's just like, yeah. they're telling me how great they are and this and that. And I did 500 million. And, um, and to me, you know, it seems like that ego is going to get in the way. And I, I tell you that to ask this question. What are some yeah. of the qualities that makes a successful student? Because you can have the right coach or you, you might resonate with that person as a student, but maybe you are not ready to be a student. You know, I, we take a different approach here. We, we believe that, yeah, look, if the company's failing, they fire the CEO. If the team isn't winning, they don't fire the players, they fire the coach. So, so you know, we, you know I, I very much challenge anybody out there that says, no, the student's got to be ready. The student's got to be better. No, you need to be a better coach. It, it, no different from a sales manager or a broker inside an office who says, look, I've got to be able to, to work with a wide variety of people. And I need a greater depth of emotional intelligence. You know, I, I work with today a few personal clients and, you know, I coach one of the, the biggest CEOs in all of real estate and I work with a brand new agent. And that's, that's like the next call. Now, I challenge myself to, to work with the CEO who's dealing with an empire and creating this massive legacy, and then the next call is with the top agent in New York City, the next one's with the number one coal banker agent in Southern California, and the next one's with a brand new agent. I think you need to, just like we say to our clients, you need diversification. Uh, the coach that only does one thing scares me. You with me? I get expertise and I get niche that's great. But once you've learned it, where do you go then? Right. Right. So, so I would, I've just really prided myself on, Hey, surround yourself with a ton of talent, a ton of very interesting, very passionate, very good coaches that can help people do a wide variety of things. I don't know if that answers your question. I'm just kind yeah. of thinking, no, no, I, I, that's, you know. that's a good answer. I, I, yeah, no, I love that. Um, in terms of you, you were, you got into the one thing, right? You were talking about the one thing that mm -hmm. most people say is their biggest problem. You said that was organization. Um, and, and then you went on to talk about a database, but if, if there's one thing that, that most people just get wrong, right? I mean, it, I'm sure you see yeah. themes, you know, thematically, like if that person changed this, their, their whole business would change. You know, what is that one thing that most people just trip over every time when they, when they're getting into real estate? You know, I don't think there is one. Mm. I mean, here, here's the, here's the stuff that goes through my head, Toby. I immediately think number one, what's your story? right? Which, you know, some people would call that presentation or selling skills, right? If your story is bad, then I can put you in front of great buyers and sellers every single day, and you're going to talk them out of working with you. Right. So story. Uh, another one is mindset. Um, you mentioned earlier, you know, when you get people that call and say, you know, hey, who would you recommend as a coach? So, you know, we get, you know, four or 500 requests a month for, hey, we'd like information on your coaching. And, and I got to tell you that it's, it's like 10% of them come to us that are like, you know, I did, you know, $200 million in sales last year and I'm number one in my state and I want to be number one in the world. Most of them are coming to us. They're, they're like, look, I'm just trying to get better. You know what I mean? I keep hearing about this stuff, like, and I'm, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to another company and I just, you know, I'm making, I'm making 70,000. I'd love to make 200,000. Do you know what I mean? And, and with that group, their own mindset and believability, believability that they can do it is a really big factor. And, and I don't mean to, you know, go back to the level. I mean, I grew up, you know, as, as you know, like some people grow up on milk and cookies. I grew up on like Brian Tracy, Earl Nightingale and Tony Robbins. <laughs> That's right. Right. So, so, you know, I'm cut from a little different cloth when it comes to mindset and the power of it. Um, but I just think most people today, they just don't believe in themselves. And if you study psychology, you understand, you know, perception is projection. How you feel on the inside is going to show up for everyone you talk to on the outside. You know, the, the late great Zig, Zig, Zig Ziglar who would say, you know, you got you know, to fake it till you make it was full of shit. It doesn't work in sales, right? You, you know, you've got to be, you've got to be whole and complete and feeling good if you're going to interact with customers because otherwise they smell it 
on a straight commission salesperson. So your story, your mindset, discipline is a major factor and it's a crisis in our industry. So bringing some discipline back to the business, treating it like a business is important. Business planning. I mean, my goodness, I, I'm building a house right now. Awesome. I couldn't imagine saying to my you know, architect and builder, let's not get anything on paper. I kind of want maybe four rooms, maybe five, <laughs> you know, be cool to have a bathroom or seven, but, but that's what an agent does when, when they don't say, this is my blueprint, this is my plan, these are the key levers that I'm going to work on all the time, right? My closing percentage, my speed to lead, my, uh, you know, my list to sale price ratio, my buyer appointment to buyer consultation to, you know, to buyer brokerage agreement conversion. You know, if we're not planning it out, I mean, look, you saw, did you see the most recent numbers from uh, the National Association of Realtors? Um, 4% of agents made more than $250,000 in GCI. No, I did, that's it? 4%? 4%. 4% of agents made more than $250,000 in GCI. It, no, is that, is that, Startling. Yeah, no, unbelievable. Um, uh, so is that active agents or just everybody with a license? Or can they, I don't the know. national, it just national, national association okay. of realtors. You know, this is our agent association. This is what they're telling us. Something's wrong. Well, fundamentally, something's wrong. You know, we've all heard the eighty twenty principle. We've all heard. You know, maybe it's ninety five five. You know, the reality is there's a there's eight hundred thousand agents out there that are doing two or three sales a year. Right. And then there's a bunch that are you know my clients and your clients and you know the smart people that listen to these kind of pod you know pod calls because they you know they want to find out what the best people are doing and then replicate it. So so I you know again I, I'm challenged by it. Gary Kelly wrote a wonderful book called The One Thing and it's fantastic. Gary's a he's a great guy. He's a brilliant dude and that's not real. That that's like saying hey I want to get in better shape I want to lose thirty pounds. What's the one thing I have to do? Yeah. Well, there isn't, there isn't one thing. You've got to have proper nutrition. You've got to do your blood work. You know, you need to probably have a stretch program. Then there's probably going to be a weight training. There's going to be a cardio component, right? What's the one thing I need to do in my relationship? It's not one thing, right? You need to clean up stuff from the past. You need to create new routines. It's always going to be multiple things. And I think that's where, as a society, we struggle. We're looking for the quick fix, the magic pill. I mean, Toby, if there was a magic pill in real estate, trust me, someone would be selling it. Right. Yeah, or a silver bullet, right? And everybody is yeah. looking for that silver bullet. Everybody is looking. You know, you, you know, one thing I, I I appreciate about you, Tom, and especially on this call, is that um, you're very authentic, right? I mean, you called out Zig Ziller and said he was full of shit, and you're saying the same thing about Gary Keller. Uh, so, I mean, uh, you know, I I love that kind of uh, you know, you're not so rah rah. You're 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 very much a real person with real viewpoints, and I you know I'm sure that comes off in your in your coaching program. Very much so. Thank you. I mean, and listen, I know that some people will be offended and, and, you know, it's never intentional. You know, it's not like, oh, I wake up every day and say, you know, today I'm going to make some people mad. Um, you know, that's, that's very much not me. My mom was a mouseketeer at Disneyland. You know, if you've met my dad, you know, he, he, he that's kind of his thing, right? Like he, he said, I'm going to be the Don Rickles of real estate training. Right. I just try to keep, I just try and keep it real. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it just let's, let's be real. Find buyers, find sellers, get them together. Don't say anything too stupid. Get paid. Service them at a high level. Do it again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Rinse. You know, do it. Rinse and repeat. Um, so, so your dad, your dad has, uh, he's, he's very, again, I, and actually I was able to last week, uh, I was able to get, um, I'm in San Diego. He did an event in San Diego. I found out about it and I went down there and Sabrina, is that your mom? Yep. Is that your mom or no? Uh, she is my stepmom. Okay, that's what I thought. I didn't want to say. Yeah. And Sabrina let me in, and which is cool. And I got to see your dad perform, and that's what that was. It was a performance, right? He's sprinkling. He is. Yeah, he is funny. He's a funny guy. He is yeah. funny on stage. I said Don Rickles. Like right. if you if you don't know Don, but you know Howard Stern, right? He's a, he's a shock jock, right? Super funny. Um. So I and 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 then he would sprinkle in nuggets of of information and and all his stuff is very you know it's very old school stuff it's it's hey uh, make the call uh uh present and close and he's yeah. a very big hey close the deal ask for the contract and it seems yeah. you know is is that tell me about your style versus his style a little bit I mean I'm sure a lot of that's rubbed off on you but you you have your unique own thing the Tom Ferry brand 
Yeah. I mean, listen, you know, nobody likes to be closed, right? You know, no one's like, oh God, okay, I'm ready for it. This is the big close. Make me feel uncomfortable. Um, I, I think that sales in general, sales is the ability to ask a lot of questions that can naturally and automatically lead the right prospect and the right salesperson to the right result. And, and when it's right, it's right. And when it's not, it's not. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't handle objections, which are just conditions or questions in the minds of the prospect. Um, you're going to do all that stuff. But I don't know. Here, here's my thought. You ready? Yep. The Bible is the Bible. It's old school, right? Been around for a couple thousand years. And there's some fundamental principles inside that that a lot of people on this planet live by and have lived by for, you know, thousands of years. So a lot of what my dad talks about are some of those wonderful principles of discipline, you know, trying to bring professionalism to an industry that, you know, that, that the average agent sells four houses a year, right? And, and that's not super professional in the minds of the consumer. So I love that. Our approach is, hey, let's be disciplined. Let's be well-planned. Let's be strategic. And then I've kind of pride myself on always being ahead of the curve, you know, staying progressive, staying relevant. I mean, I was talking about Facebook advertising two years ago, and people are like, Facebook advertising? What are you talking about? And now today, people are crushing it with it. In, in 2006, I got 600 of my best clients on the phone and said, hey, one of my clients uh, handles this REO asset. We should get you guys on the phone with them, and you should start working REOs. In 2006, and Toby, they're going, what? Right. The market's flying. It's yeah. with REOs. I'm like, trust me. And then all those REO brokers, like you mentioned, Todd Miller, who is, you know, is a client, coach of ours for a long time, great guy, he and his wife, Alana. When the market started to shift, hey, the market's shifting. Let's get back to what we know works. Let's, let's mature our relationships with our database. Let's get back to the tried and true. So I guess the, the biggest difference between myself and, and there's a few others that do it. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm not the only one, um, is that we're very mindful of the customer and the market. Got it. And then the agent. And we don't think agent first. We don't think, you know, close, do more deals. It's like, who's the customer? Where are they at? How are you communicating with them? How does a 34-year-old want to buy a house? How does a 64-year-old want to list their house? And I think as long as you stay consumer-centric and then you pay attention to the changes that are happening all around us, it's, it's a little easy to be savvy in real estate. It's a little easy to cut through the weeds and become the obvious agent of choice. So that's the stuff that we work on. Got it. Oh, okay. that's great. So, so one thing you said, you said that you're mindful of trends and you, and you went on to give some examples of that. You know, when I, let's talk about mindset for a, a second, because I, 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 that 4% of agents earn more than 200,000. I was not aware of that, that figure at all, you know, cause I have everybody on my show makes tons of cash and uh, sure. in a lot of ways they make it sound easy. You know, it's, it's go out and do the hard work. But in terms of mindset, one question that I, that I, I, I don't understand, right? Or the, I don't, I don't understand the answer is, um, how does someone, you mentioned a client earlier that went from 79 million to 400 million. What, what, how, how does somebody have that, that they just keep pushing on the gas to go from, they're making good money at 79 million. How do they want to strive for 400 million and keep on going? So, so here's the deal. You ready? I yeah. have this conversation. I have, I have two boys. So the, I, I have this conversation a lot with them and I have it a lot with, you know, our clients that are, you know, as you know, the, the hot trend right now amongst um, good agents becoming extraordinary is building teams, right? So, so let's be fair. The people you interview all have one thing in common. They're ambitious, right? So right. ambitious people are going to find a way. They're not going to be stuck by the, you know, the resource blame game that most people take on. I don't have time. I don't have money. I'm at the wrong brokerage. My manager doesn't do enough for me, right? The resourceful people on the planet, the ambitious people always find a way. So in the case of this agent that I was just referring to, you know, his name is John. John is a very ambitious guy, right? There's a reason why. So he was searching for who can get me out of the real estate box. Like I'm already number two in my town. And he's looking around at this little real estate island of Newport Beach. And he's like, okay, so that one's doing a hundred million. Who's doing more? And he actually went out of his way and he interviewed another one of my clients from La Jolla, California, who dominates well over a hundred million. And another one of my clients from Malibu, who was doing 200 million. And then another one of our clients from New York City, who was doing 250 million. And they all said, oh, you should talk to Tom Ferry. 
So ambition met opportunity, and boom, he grew. There's no rocket science to that. If you're not ambitious, first of all, if you're not ambitious, you're not listening to this message. So, Toby, you know you attract smart, ambitious people, right? So you got the ace in the hole. Yeah. Well, and everybody in my audience, I mean, they, they are, it's amazing The again, the kind of emails I get from these folks, they are, they are hungry for, for yes. this kind of stuff that you're, that you're, uh, that you're emanating right now, you know, in terms of ambition meets opportunity and, uh, you know, that kind of ties in with your, you know, in 2006, you saw a trend coming, right? The market was going crazy in 2006, but, yeah. but then it crashed in 07, right? And the real crash happened, you know, in 08 after Lehman failed. How did you see yeah. that? I mean, how are you, how are you? on the cutting edge of that sort of thing, you know, even with, even with, uh, uh, doing videos early. So, you know, I, yeah, you know, I shared with you, I'm, it, everybody talks about do what you do better, right? Like do what you do best. Like, what are you good at? So on my wall, I've got my North star and, and that's like the big re, you know, the reason we're in business, who are we focusing on? Who matters to us? Who's our customer and what are we committed to? And then below that, it says three things, connect, create, and contribute. That's it. That's what I do. So I'm a connector. You know, I, I've got right now my current new dream 100 list of the 100 most influential people in real estate that I think they're in that category. And I don't know them well enough to send them a text and get a quick response. So I'm working right now aggressively on that dream 100. I think every real estate agent on the planet should have a dream 100 houses in their community that they want to sell. And they should have a dream 50 list of the 50 most influential people in their town that they want to be the agent of choice of, right? So to bring it back to our listeners. So, you know, I'm very lucky. I coach CEOs. I get invited to board meetings. I get invited to, you know, to connect and to contribute. And then most importantly, Toby, I ask a lot of questions that I listen. And when I'm sitting with a bunch of my friends that are all in the banking industry and they're all saying, yeah, we're out of subprime, man. That's just, woof. that's not good. I'm like, wow, they're all dropping out of subprime. Hmm. Okay. It's coming. These are really smart bankers. They know what they're doing, you know, and then because I was networked in, because I was connected, because I don't burn bridges, I'm very mindful that I'm in the, I'm in a marathon business and right. I'm running a marathon for the next 30 years in this business that people say to me, hey, uh, yeah, I just left um, Bank X and I'm now at IndyMac and I'm running all of their REO assets. You know a bunch of real estate agents. We should talk. And that's how it all started. But in fairness to like YouTube, I told you I was playing golf, you know, at my local club and I was playing with a buddy and uh, two other guys walk up. Hey, can we join you? Sure, of course. I'm like, hey, Tom Ferry, nice to meet you. What do you do? He's like, my name is David On. I'm like, oh, David, where do you work? He's like, Google. I'm like, wow, Google locally? Like, what do you do? And he said, oh, I'm in charge of media and content. I'm like, can I carry your bag? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I will hand you your club and give you a little neck massage. Sit with me. And I played the worst round of golf in my life intentionally to have five hours with this guy in the golf course. And I picked his brain dry. Ambition so, meets opportunity. In action. Bingo. I love it. So listen, Bingo. Tom, Bingo. I, I've had you on for 41 minutes and I don't want to take too much of your time. I, and I, I literally, I, I could ask another hour's worth of questions, but let's, let's wrap this up a little bit. Um, uh, here's how I end up. There's three questions. You know, I, I, obviously I'm an aspiring agent, right? The people in my audience. Yeah. One book. What is one book I should go out and buy today? I have two copies of it sitting on my desk. It'll be hard for them to find. It has absolutely nothing to do with real estate. And it's one of the best business books I've ever read. Uh, the book is called Managing. And the author's name is Harold Janine, G-E-N-E-E-N. And Harold Janine, prior to uh, the great Jack Welch, right, of GE fame, yep. Harold Janine was the man right? He had 170 companies that he was running simultaneously, the, the first sort of super conglomerate manager, you know, of the last hundred years. Extraordinary book. Um, again, nothing to do with real estate. Um, but if I'm, if I'm a real estate practitioner and I believe that change is coming and I want to do it better, it's all about system and process, system and process. And this guy just, he nailed it on the head. This was like back in the 70s. So I don't mean to go old school. That's the first one I'd recommend. If there was a second book, boy, I don't know. You know, if I was talking to somebody that was in their head, I would, uh, matter of fact, I'll, how many people will listen to this podcast? What, what's your guess, Toby? About 6,000. 
About 6,000. Okay. So, and mostly real estate, mostly North American or all over the world? Um, they're all over, mostly North America, but they are all over the world. Cool. So I would tell them, I would grab like something mindset related because right now, if you don't believe that this is the greatest time on the planet to be in sales, even if you're in Portugal, you're in Lisbon and the market's been down 30% a year for like five straight years, you know, Manuel, who's a, you know, the biggest Remax broker there, who's a pal you got to work on your mindset every single day or you crumble or you're in, you know, New York city and the market's so piping hot or Florida or Arizona or wherever you are in the world, the market's so hot. If your mindset's off, your mindset's off and that's going to impact your performance. So I'd go old school with like Tony Robbins, you know, right. do, do something from Tony or, you know, maybe check out, uh, you know, Darren Hardy, right. Who's kind of the modern day Brian Tracy. I'd do something like that. Okay. I love those. Um, you are definitely a guy that, uh, you, I mean, you know a lot about technology. I mean, I, the, you, you uh, mentioned how you can take your, your prospects and upload it into Google Maps. Do you have an internet tool like an Evernote that you're in love with that you can share with the audience? You know, we use Dropbox and Evernote and, you know, I'm big on, I'm big on apps. I'm big on efficiency. Um, I got to tell you the hottest thing, and it really was uh, last you know, not, not this January, but a year ago, um, I was at the Inman Connect conference and I, I strongly recommend everybody attend Inman Connect, whether it's, you know, San Francisco or in New York City, because Brad does a really good job of showcasing some of the stuff that's really coming new and interesting down the pike in real estate. Um, the guys I met with last year that I fell in love with is a company called Contactually, yeah. Contactually. And I'm sure you know that program. That's been a game changer for a lot of our clients. Um, people that are already using Wise Agent or Top Producer or, you know, <laughs> Follow Up Boss and Boomtown and, you know, all these other great solutions because it just does the one thing you know you need to do, which is stay in communication on a weekly or a monthly basis with the people that matter most. Boom. So I really dig that one. Uh, for you, Tom, I mean, you, you're a guy, you're 43 years old. By the way, I'm 44. So, I, so we're about the same age. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, you're a guy with a ton of energy. What kind of person, or, or do you have a personal habit that you feel has contributed to your success? I'm looking right at it. So it's interesting. So I've also, I've also been married for 20 years to the same person, which wow. in the state of California appears to be a very big deal. Um, so I've got a couple habits that, that are really the sort of cornerstone to my success. And I bring up marriage because my wife can tell if I fall off track. You know, it's just, it's like the slightest little energy shift that she notices and she'll say, how's your morning routine going? I'm like, oh, you know, I traveled. I was on uh, the excuse, excuse, excuse. She's like, yeah, baby, just get back on it. So every day I write down 10 things I'm grateful for. And I really get centered on like, I'm grateful for my wife. She's, she puts up with me. She's been married to me for 20 years. You know, my boys, Michael and Steven, right down to all of our partners in business and all every real estate agent on the planet, my dream 100. I'm grateful for the people I don't know yet that I'm going to get to know. And then I write down the three things that made me laugh the day before. Cause just when I laugh, I just feel better. Then I take my income goal, right? So my personal income goal, not my company revenue goal, my personal income goal, I times it by three hmm. and I write it in the form of an affirmation. Right, So we all know the value of the reticular activating system that you don't see opportunities or, you know, ways for you to achieve your goals unless you're focused on it, right? So I say, you know, I want to make a dollar, I raise it to three dollars. If my goal is to make a dollar, I only see opportunities that will make me a dollar. Right. But if I raise it to three, I'm going to find opportunities that can get me to three. So I triple my income goal and I say, you know, I earn X dollars or more in 2014. Then I write down all of my month's goals and I've got 10 of them every month. And then I write down my top 10 goals for the year, business and personal. And, and my attempt is to do it every day. And in fairness, as I just shared with you, keeping it real, I'm like four days, you know, four days out of the week, I really get it right, you know, maybe once on the weekends when I'm not already on a tennis match or something with my kids. But that one thing keeps me so, I, I hate to use that phrase, one thing, but that one thing really keeps my, my mindset right, centered on who matters most, why I'm doing this, have some fun, what's my income goal, what are the big goals I'm working towards, and it keeps me focused. Bang. Tom, hey, thank you so much for coming on the show. I'll tell you all through this, you, you've done a few, some things that other guests can't do or haven't done. 
you've dropped golden nuggets of advice that we can learn from, but you've also thrown out actionable tips, things that people can go and implement in their business today. So I thank you for coming on the show. And I got to tell you, it's rare that I have a guest come on and I have a hard time keeping up with them. And uh, I had a hard time keeping up with you. So uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming on. And uh, here's my, oh, tell us where we can find you and we'll sign off. Yeah. So um, thank. First of all, thank you. I mean, again, any opportunity, as I said to you, any opportunity to contribute. You know, it's it's one of my three most important values. It's one of the three things that I love doing every day. So thank you. Thanks for doing the show and having the courage to you know to to help change the industry and make it better and create a safe environment for really good people to become great and then extraordinary. So my hats off to you. Thank you. Um, you know, listen. GTS, baby. Google that stuff. If you just Google Tom Ferry, you're going to find my website. You're going to find my YouTube channel, which is all that stuff for free. You're going to find my Facebook page, which is not some, you know, weird zombie drone person in the Philippines. It's me responding, connecting, having fun with about, you know, 35, 40,000 agents. I'm all over Twitter. I love Twitter. Most people don't seem to get it, but I dig it. So if they Google me, they'll find me and I would be honored to, you know, connect and, you know, shake their hand or do something digital and, and spend some time. So thank awesome. you for that. Well, I'm going to Facebook friend you and I'm going to follow you on Twitter. Hey, I'm still working on my sign off line, but right now it's this. Until next time, Tom, live accountably. Oh, I love that. <laughs> thank you, Toby. Appreciate See, it, man. I look forward to talking to you soon. You too. See you, bud. <clears throat> wow. What about that? What a great episode. I know you've loved it. I've loved it. If you have enjoyed this episode, you know what You know what I'd ask you to do? Tom's on Twitter. Go find his Twitter handle. I think it's at Tom Ferry. Uh, but send Tom a tweet. Let him know that you've enjoyed it. Send him an email. Tell him you appreciated him taking his time out and, and talking to me and as well you. If you can't find his email, right, because he's a famous guy and they kind of hide their emails and, and uh, sometimes, you know, you, you have to send your email to him, to his company, forget that. Send it to me and I will make sure that he gets it. And uh, you know my personal email, but it uh, if you don't, it's Toby, T-O-B-Y, Toby at superagentslive.com. And while you're at it, go to iTunes and subscribe. Leave a rating and review. Do that. That helps the show. It really does it. We want to get up in, as far in rankings as possible. If you can't take the time out and do that, that's all right. But look, go and tell a friend. I'm sure that you know everyone or everyone knows at least one person who can benefit from this message. Until next time, I'm Toby Salgado, and I personally thank you for listening to Super Agents Live. Let's go.